Good morning, and welcome virtually to Bethany Christian Church. We thank you for your patience and understanding to worship with us from the safety and comfort of your homes. We miss you here each week, but we are praying for your safety, and soon we will gather here once again. Our theme for this Sunday is the path to inclusion. Where might be God calling us, individually and as church, to take a more active role in opening the doors within our wide circle of relationships? Jesus was a model for creating a compassionate community of radical inclusiveness. And he calls us to step out of our comfort zones and to walk the path of a wide welcome. Let us open our hearts and minds to God's loving kindness, God's radical embrace and welcome. Let us enjoy a song, an inspirational piece of music by our music director, Mark Germer. Thank you, Mark. We read in the Gospels that Jesus each day would seek a place of refuge and spend a little time in prayer with God. Prayer and meditation and reflection is an exercise that we should practice every day of our lives. It brings healing and wholeness not only to us as individuals, but to our wider community and world. And so we gather in prayer here today. We remember those in our community who are in need of our thoughts and our prayers. Once again, we pray for students, teachers, professors, school administrators, counselors, as they begin a new academic year. Our children started last week in school. Our university students begin this week. We pray for the safety of all. We continue to pray for those who are ill with COVID-19. We pray for our caregivers, hospitals, staff, doctors, and nurses, those who treat uh, patients suffering with COVID-19. 
We pray for those who are victimized by racial prejudice or injustice. May God bring them strength and courage and perseverance in this time when reconciliation is needed. We pray today for Pauline, whose service was held last Monday at Lincoln Memorial Funeral Home. We pray for her children, Cheryl, Rick, and their families. Our prayers are for Ramsey, Lynn and Brian's dog, who will cross over tomorrow into God's loving care. We thank you for the years of happiness that Ramsey brought to them. We pray for Remy, a five-month-old grandson of Nancy and Dave. We continue to hold Remy in our prayers for healing. We pray for Jack Sr., recovering at home now from pneumonia and to stay in the hospital. We pray for Candy, who is home and healing from surgery. We pray for Sandy and Barb and Ron and Terry and all others who are in our community who are in need of our thoughts and prayers. Please pray with me. Merciful God, when we experience moments of weakness and rejection, help us to recall your strength and your compassion. Grant us courage and healing to those who are suffering with illnesses and injustices. We continue to pray, O oh God, for those who feel alone and isolated. We pray for community. We pray for those who are persecuted for their sexual identity. And we pray for your justice and reconciliation. We pray for the immigrant in our midst, those who are here to study and to begin their life's vocation, those who are residents of another country. Keep them safe and give them safe passage. We pray for victims of racial prejudice, biases, and conflict. And we pray for your peace, O oh God. We pray for people struggling with addictions. Give us wisdom. We pray, O oh God, for those who are disabled and the differently abled. And we pray for understanding. We pray, O oh God, for those who suffer alone and in silence. Give us comfort. We pray for our enemies here and abroad. Gracious God, give us love. In the name of Jesus, our Christ, we come to you in a spirit of reflection and prayer and feel your energy with us, always guiding us. Amen. This morning's scripture reading comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. 
Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sandy and Bruce. A beautiful song and a beautiful message. Each Saturday morning, Chris and I look forward to a morning walk along the Mopac Trail, which is right near where we live. We like to walk the Mopac Trail. It's beautiful and uh, tree covered in many places And we enjoy the diversity of people that we meet and exchanging a greeting with them. There are certain people that we meet almost every time we walk the path. There is an older man on his bicycle who greets everyone with the words, May Jesus Christ bless you. And he's going so fast that he hardly has time to get it out of his mouth. Yesterday morning, there were two young Chinese women who were engaged in a conversation 
about friends and boyfriends. And so we had to slow down a little bit and stay behind them so we could catch more of the conversation. But half of the conversation was in Chinese and half of it was in English. There's a young Asian man that I see running every time I walk. And it took a few good mornings or hellos before I got a response back from him. And now when I greet him, there is a smile and a hello back. The people walking, running, bicycling on Lincoln's splendid trail system highlights the multi-ethnic diversity and inclusiveness of our great city. Dr. Soong Chan Ra is an associate professor of church growth and evangelism at North Park Theological Seminary in Chicago and a former founding pastor of a multi-ethnic urban church in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which was focused on living out the values of racial inclusion and social justice. Soon Chan Ra says that the American church is at a crossroads. Like the early church in the book of Acts, we are faced with the challenge of prioritizing the gospel message over our own culture. The question is, will we rise to meet the challenge or will we be blind to our own racial bias and prejudices? One out of every five American Christians attends a multi-ethnic congregation. Seventy-eight percent of American Christians say that every single church should strive for racial diversity. In Boston, for example, there are more Christians who speak non-English, but there are more churches today than there were in 1970. Yes, multi-ethnicism is happening faster in the church than it is in society at large, believe it or not. But white churches are declining and ethnic churches are rising. As we see in today's lesson from Matthew chapter 15 verses 21 through 28, one of the unique things about Jesus was his radically inclusive love and work. The New Testament Gospels present to us a Jesus who addressed the cries of the people who were victims of Roman military persecution, victims of disease, victims of injustice, and Jesus ministered to people who were victims of their own spiritual conflict. In today's passage, Jesus and his disciples entered Gentile territory to the north of Israel, near Tyre and Sidon, which is in modern-day Lebanon, just right north of Israel. Matthew tells us that a Canaanite woman emerges onto the scene and starts shouting at them, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David, my daughter is tormented by a demon. The woman is hard to ignore, but Jesus doesn't pay any attention to her. That's not the reaction that we would expect from Jesus. What's going on in this passage? Jesus has crossed geographical boundaries. A Jew going into Gentile, which means simply non-Jewish territory. Jesus is confronted by a Canaanite woman. Now, there were no Canaanites in Jesus' lifetime, but the land that Jesus went to in Tyre was Canaan before, or several centuries before the life of Jesus. And we know from first century rabbinic sources that Canaanite was a term that was used in Jesus' time 
meaning Gentile. So for Matthew and Matthew's church, this is a story that addresses Jewish and Gentile relations. That was a huge issue in Matthew's first century church as well as all churches established in the first century Mediterranean world. Matthew's church was a church that began five decades after the life of Jesus. Not during, but after. A Jewish church that was becoming increasingly Gentile. And Matthew's church was really concerned about how do we keep Jewish faith, practice, and ritual yet accept Gentiles into the life of the community. In this respect, I think this story and Matthew's church connects very well with our church of the 21st century. Think about it. Groups of different people working and worshiping together. Jews and Gentiles. A commitment to the path of Jesus is probably the only thing that this group had in common. Think about it. The Jews had dietary laws and circumcision to keep kosher. The Gentiles did not. The Gentiles speak Greek. The Jewish people want to keep Hebrew and Aramaic sacred. And then there's the question of music. Ah. You know, that age-old question of music, it keeps popping up 21 centuries later. In the story, Jesus turns to the Canaanite woman and states that he's come to minister only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, Jesus' mission is to his own people, not Gentiles, but Jews. The woman is not part of that household because she's Gentile. She shouldn't even be speaking to Jesus, a Jewish man in public anyway. But the woman has a daughter who's sick. The, the passage says she's tormented by a demon, which is probably a physical disease that wasn't understood in Jesus' day. The mother is desperate, and she pleads for Jesus to heal her child because evidently word had spread that Jesus was a healer. And Jesus says to the woman, you know, it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. In essence, Jesus is saying, it's not a very kind thing for Jesus to say, but in essence he's saying that his healing power is reserved only for the people of Israel, only for the Jewish people. Again, not something we would expect Jesus to say. But the woman is persistent. She refuses to be humiliated even by Jesus himself. And she says to him, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs get to eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. It's a clever response. And the woman has made an impact on the thinking and consciousness of Jesus. She may not be a child at the table, but she is one eager for any food that Jesus has to offer. She believes in Jesus and just wants Jesus to help her daughter. And so Jesus turns to the woman and he answers her, Woman, great is your faith. In this story, we see Jesus being impressed by the faith of a Gentile woman. 
His love and healing power are not just for the people of Israel, but Gentiles as well. Keep in mind this story was read into the life of the early church five decades after the life of Jesus. This is a story more about the church than it is about Jesus and the Canaanite woman. It's a story of radical inclusion. Jews welcoming Gentiles into one community. The New, De- the New Testament depicts the Jesus movement as one of the most diverse groups imaginable. 2,000 years ago, a radically inclusive group. We read about Jesus welcoming a blind man, a leper, a poor farmer, a rich young lawyer, a tax collector, a widow, children and women, Samaritans, dreaded Samaritans, sinners and outcasts, Pharisees and Sadducees, all part of God's creation and all welcomed into the family or household of God. What a vision of inclusiveness this is. What a struggle to make it a reality. Jesus' earliest followers gathered into house churches all throughout the Roman Empire and Mediterranean world. Jews, Gentiles, Samaritans, Greeks, Romans, Asians, Africans, all worshiping God together. They held a variety of different views, languages, dress, foods, practices. They even held different views about who this Jesus was. But they all came together in a community called church. Today, we're often lamenting the fact that the American church is in decline. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen to us? Our churches are closing. They're they're not as large as they used to be. Oh my gosh, our church is going online. We're not meeting in person. The music, the dress, tattoos, earrings, and every place imaginable. By 2050, more than 80% of Christians in the world will be in Africa, Asian, and Latin America. In 1900, it was just reversed. More than 80% of Christians resided in North America and in Europe. But church, you know, we've encountered this time and time again, how our beliefs Our theology, our faith, is rooted in 4th century doctrine and creeds. We have to give up our biases, our prejudices, against people who think differently than we do, who speak differently, or who look differently, or who claim a different status in life because every one of us is a child of God whether we are in the community or outside we must embrace true inclusion a church that embraces a radical hospitality a true inclusion is a church that is alive with the energy and passion and compassion of Jesus. Jesus teaches us to let compassion guide our hearts. Not doctrine, not creeds, not dress, not lifestyle, but compassion. It's what's inside of us that counts. The story that we are told in Matthew's Gospel It's a story about diversity, 
And it shows us that diversity is deeply biblical and profoundly a Christian practice. Churches that are diverse are simply more fun. So Bethany Christian Church and followers of Jesus the world over, let us be open and challenged to grow in our understanding of how diverse this new age of God is that is ushering forth right before our very eyes. May God bless us all. Let us be reminded that the church is continuing its ministry and inclusive embrace of people with needs right here in Lincoln and across the world. Our ministry is blessed by your giving that is sent to Bethany Christian Church each week. Through our offerings of time, talent, and financial gifts, we can give the wider community a glimpse of God's radical inclusive love that heals and refreshes and renews. On this table are God's gifts for all God's people. We are all welcomed at this table. When we eat the bread, be filled with God's love. When we drink from the cup, be quenched with God's love. When we leave the table, go out to the wider world and share that wonderful love. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for this bread and for this cup and for the life and love and wisdom to walk your path into this world. Around this table, we, res we celebrate our oneness and we respect our differences. In these symbols of bread and cup, may the compassion of Jesus continue to fill us with life so that we can bring healing and reconciliation to the wider world. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Each week we gather to remember that it was on the night that Jesus would be delivered into his death that he met at table with his disciples, with his friends in an upper room in the city of Jerusalem. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread. He blessed the bread and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said to them, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then Jesus took the cup, he gave thanks for it, gave it to his disciples and said to them, drink from this cup, all of you. This cup is my life. It is my life that I pour out for you and for the world. And every time that you gather and drink from this cup, do so for the remembrance of me. And now let us pray together. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We thank you for joining us today at Bethany Christian Church for worship. As we leave this time together, let us leave knowing that the love of God fills us, fills us with wisdom, that the compassion of Jesus leads us to go into the wider world and to extend that loving embrace and word of kindness and reconciliation to those who feel estranged. So go today with the love of God and may peace be in your day. Amen.